Let's go to Hollywood and check out the world headquarters of subconscious jiu-jitsu. Brent Berniston is here to talk about training under John Jock Machado, building community, working in the elite security field, and he will also show you how to easily pass butterfly guard. I'm an avid traveler, co-founder of budovideos.com, jiu-jitsu black belt, and lifelong student of the martial arts, who strives to know more about the competitors and instructors who are revolutionizing the jiu-jitsu lifestyle. Join me in my journey as I travel, train, learn, and get rolled up. In the heart of North Hollywood, amongst the craziness of the big city, you'll find a clean and charming gym ran by one of the most attentive and talented instructors on the planet. This is Rolled Up at Subconscious Jiu-Jitsu Headquarters with Brent Berniston. So Brent, you uh, came up through the ranks with one of the most legendary Jiu-Jitsu teachers of all time, John Jock Machado, and uh, how was the training environment there? Uh, it was amazing. Um, those early days uh, were absolutely incredible. Um, you know, we, we kind of were that second wave of guys coming in. And, you know, Jean-Jacques had just come off the Abu Dhabi Championships where he submitted everyone in like under five minutes or whatever. Uh, I think it was 1999. Um, I started Jean-Jacques right around that time. I think it was 2000. And so, uh, you know, every day training with one of the best guys in the world, if not the best guy at that time in the world, um, was incredible. You know, we had amazing students, uh, Eddie Bravo and, you know, David Dunn, Matt Baker, um, just a Paulo Guilabal. All these guys were, you know, Rico Rodriguez. I mean, there was so many tough guys. And uh, I really believe at that time, those early 2000s, um, Jean Jacques was probably the best place in the U.S. to train. Um, I had gotten to go to some of the other academies, um, both in California and in New York and Florida and some of the other places where, and uh, I, I always felt that coming home was the, the toughest training, mm. you know? So it was, it was amazing. What made the training good? Was it the tough training partners or was it something about the class structure or how Jean Jacques taught? What was, I think separated his academy is that Jean Jacques was on the mat every class. Um, he taught the beginners, he taught the advanced, uh, he was rolling on nearly every day with us. Um, and so, you know, some of the other academies, the guys got to, uh, you know, they had other instructors teaching and, you know, it was like one day a week they would come in and it would be like, oh no, you know, he's, he's training today, he's training today. And everyone's calling everyone to show up to the academy that day. Um, but as Jean-Jacques, he was there, you know, and I, uh, it was one thing that I think I took from there that I bring here is uh, back then I used to be like, man, why is Jean-Jacques teaching a, a beginner class? You know, and I couldn't, I never understood. I was like, why? this has to be so boring for him. You know, it's like, um, but I get it now. Now having my own academy, I, I realize how important it is to have that influence on the, on the new students. Um, even more so than the advanced classes, you know? And so having him there every day on the mats, teaching you, answering questions, um, it was, it truly was an, a, an amazing experience. Uh, we're in this position, we're looking to pass his guard. Usually we're in this butterfly uh, position, Jake sits up. And what we're gonna do, the first one, is I'm controlling the bottom pant leg and I'm just rolling up the, the grip here. Left hand is gonna go on the same side collar. All right, so we're, we're attacking in this position. So what I'm looking to do is I'm gonna step up with the same arm that's grabbing his lapel. That's the leg that's gonna step up. And when I do that, I wanna make sure that I really hug this line, right? I don't want this, right? Or I don't even want to step up and have all this space between here. This step up is gonna go right in line with his knee. So I'm like this, I'm stepping up, and as I step up, I'm bringing the, the knee in, right? I'm gonna push, and as I do that, I kind of back step. Now I put pressure, and I come down. So it's a pretty quick, nice little easy pass. I'm in this position, knee comes up, hugs, pushes, and as I push, I take away the space. 
All right. So we're here to here. See how I'm controlling the hip line by pushing here. As I push, push down, and I move right into position on that pass. Here to here, boom, right here. All right. So we're here to here. We go up, this is tight, I can smash, right? And then ride and pass. Or if we can kind of keep him in this uh, more balled up, we can use it almost like a top and we can turn him. So as this sets up here, I push here, I just have to clear this leg and now I'm gonna pull here. And smash, right? It depends on how big your guy is. He was really heavy or really big. It might be harder to, to spin him. Someone your same size, I step up, I push, and I can turn him kind of like a little steering wheel, right? One last time. Here to here, I'm in this position. Step, I start that pressure, and now I'm pulling, pushing, and closing off that distance, all right? We're here at Subconscious Headquarters. Uh, why did you choose that name, and what does Subconscious Jiu Jitsu mean to you? <laughs> that took a while. Um, you know, whenever I started uh, my own academy, I, I really wanted like a cool name, you know, and you're trying to think of all these cool names, and you know, what it actually means. But I really wanted it not only to be cool, but I also wanted it to mean something to me. Um, especially during that, that time, you know, I was really getting into a lot of um, spirituality and, you know, focusing a lot on that. And so uh, I remember I was sitting in my room and I was writing on a piece of paper and I'm trying to list, you know, like, what, what my jujitsu, like, what, what would I see as important or how would I describe it? And I remember when I was writing all these things down and one of them that uh, I put was, uh, I want it to be submission conscious. You know, and that coming from Jean-Jacques, Jean-Jacques was always like, you go for the submission, you go for the submission. So that was pretty high on my list was uh, submission conscious. And when I wrote it on the paper, I actually wrote sub and then conscious, right? So I didn't fill out the whole thing. And then I kept going down and I was writing all this stuff and then I went back to the top and I'm looking at it and I'd see sub and conscious. And I was like, that's it. Like, and it was such a moment of like, there was no other, when I saw it, there was, there was no turning back. Like, it was like, that's it. Stood up from my desk, I go, sub me, I get on I Google, I'm putting subconscious BJJ in, I'm buying the domain, I'm doing it all. Um, and yeah, so that, that's kind of how the name came, but also what it kind of means to me is like I said, we're, it has dual meaning, right? As you know, uh, jujitsu flowing through the subconscious mind. You know, I think when we get to the higher levels, we're really focusing. Uh, we don't even think about what we're doing, right? It's just our sub. We're operating in that subconscious uh, area. Um, but there again, the dual meaning falling back on. Uh, yet we're always, you know, submission conscious. Mm, love it. We're here, whatever. Boom! I push. I get into that position. If I can just go here and push make the pass, I'll do that, right? It's kind of like just the first option. If it works, it works. Uh, what will happen a lot is he'll end up going shin guard instead. As I put my knee up, he'll be able to pull his knee outside of my knee line, right? So if I'm here, I go to do that, he ends up going shin to shin, or even if I was here, he gets that, right? So. Now I'm just gonna use that, that leg that I used to get up to basically stand myself up. So as I go here, he goes here, now I stand up and I back away. So now I'm in this position. What I'm gonna do is start to circle to my right real quick. All right, and then now I'm gonna pull this across, take out the space and pass the guard this way. So <clears throat> we're here to here. I go here, we go shin to shin, we back away, boom. And I make my pass. All right. Once I have that, I get my cross face in, in position. Here to here. I try to go. If he if he locks right, uh, of course we have some uh, options where if I, I bring kick it over and mount. Uh, but if I feel uncomfortable, kick away. Get back in position. Set him up and make that pass. 
here to here. All right. And you can do it. Um, you can do that same pass even sitting down or on my knees. Uh, I think it's better to stand up when you do it, but I can kind of do the same thing. I'm going to do a back step. So as I push him here, I clear the leg, right? So I push, pull, pull. And now I can go into that. Um, but like I said, we're working this off of that. Back, push, and go. All right? Some of you guys are either mm, pushing him flat and then trying to pull his leg. Like some of you are going like this, and now he's like this, and now he doesn't go flat. Others are going here and trying to, his heels are on the ground. They're heavy here, right? But I just get Jake heels where his weight starts to go back, and as that happens, I start to go here. See how, look, his heels are off the mat. See how easy it is for me to control him either, either direction? That's what I'm looking for. So if I'm in here, what I'm doing is I'm getting Jake's heels off the mat. His heels are off the mat, and now I can pass. So we have to push him back just far enough that his feet are like this. Now I'm a top. Right, if I'm here, you can't push me this way. As soon as my heels are off, I spin. So it's at that point, right as I push, his heels come off the mat, then I do the leg drag. All right? Friends. Yes. What, do this seating one once more? How did you, for the lack of flexible guys, how did you clear that leg? Um, kind of like a back step. Right? I'm, I'm going to pull this back. I'm pushing here. See, I, I remove this hook. He's got this hook, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick it back, almost like I'm going to do, um, almost like I fall to my hip, right? I can come back and come back and fall in. Same premise though, lift legs off the ground before. Yeah, it's kind of like when we do this, right? I go here, here, and I fall to the side, right? But we're just here. And sometimes I'll do this. Yeah. You know, right away, we're just in here, and I'll just boom, and push, and try to go ahead right away. Another detail that you'll, some of you guys are doing is you're letting go of this leg drop. You're here, you stop, you're in this position, you're going here, you're doing this, and then you let go, and that's what's gonna happen, right? So when I'm in that position, and I'm circling, ooh, see how I cleared it? Now, after I'm in position, now I can let go and work for my underhook on the far side. I've traveled to a lot of gyms all over the world, but I think you have something really special here. And what I really admire is how you're able to create such a community. You know, I've been to your Joshua Tree retreats a couple times now, and yeah. everybody there is, they're all such cool people. And uh, that's something that not a lot of gyms do. A lot of gyms are, you know, they teach great jujitsu, but it's kind of a separation between um, the students and the associating outside of the gym. Mm -hmm. Was that a conscious decision that you made? A hundred percent. Um, you know, I can think back, you know, I, I think we always fall back on what we know and what we came from. You know, I, I trained at a lot of different gyms, uh, you know, I did some security work and stuff. And so I would travel a lot and I got to go to a lot of gyms and I'd always take what, you know, some of the better things from each gym. But one thing that I uh, really got from Jean Jacques is uh, there was a back mat. And as you see in our, our gym, we have a back mat back there, right? And after class, uh, it was like me, uh, Joe Rogan, Eddie Bravo, uh, Jamie Walsh, David Dunn, Matt Baker, all these guys, we would always go to that back mat after class and we'd sit and we'd talk. And, you know, we built relationships. And, and I think I realized right away that, that how important that was. Um, you know, still to this day, those core group of people are all friends. You know, we're all, we all, uh, built that friendship that lasts, you know, and, and a lot of schools, you know, you go there, you show up, you, you train, and then you leave, right? It's like, you got to get out of here, you got to go. And I, I think that, you know, when you, when you show up and you actually have those connections, now when we train, um, you're my friend, you're my teammate, right? And I know you outside of a, a hard role. 
And, and so I think that within the gym itself, it, it creates a, an atmosphere where we are friends. We do hang out. We do go to Joshua Tree. We do beach days. We do hiking trips. We do barbecues. We do, you know, all these different things that now I'm not just your training partner. You're not my competition. Now you're my friend and we're trying to get better together. And so I, I think it's, you know, it's a really important thing that, you know, I, I feel like a lot of gyms don't quite do right. Right. And when you're somebody's friend, you're less likely to do something to injure them. Right. Even though we're training in a hard martial art, uh, you have that probably a little more control if you care about that. Person. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, I see it, you know, here, I, you know, I, tr we have very few injuries, um, you know, just like any martial arts school or, or gym, you're going to have, you know, a few, but um, it doesn't happen that often. You know, I, there's very few instances where people get angry or yelling at, I mean, and all the time I've had a gym, maybe once, twice at most, you know, and I, I can remember, you know, in the early days of training and a couple of the academies that I was at, uh, that wasn't the case. You know, it was, there was a lot of heated arguments back, you know, in the day. So uh, I definitely feel it's important to, to kind of do that. Hey guys, I'm here to tell you about the world's best fight shorts, the Nogi Ghost. If you've ever owned a pair of our shorts, you know these things last forever. With the Ghost, of course, there are no outer pockets that toes or fingers can get caught in. The high quality embroidered logos will never fade or come undone. They come in six different colors and two lengths, a seven inch inseam or a shorter five inch inseam if you wanna show off your quads. The flexible gusset and the four-way stretch material will ensure that you don't feel restricted in any of your movements. The stretch waistband and drawstring allow for a bit of variance in your weight. Whether you add a few pounds or cut a few, they'll still fit perfectly. And lastly, if you're like me, you might wear your shorts outside the gym on occasion, so we have a hidden inner pocket for your phone or keys. I can proudly say the Ghost is the best fight short in the world, and I hope you'll give it a try. So I try to use all three of these, just like we do with most techniques. So I try to leave them, right? So sometimes the first is gonna work. Sometimes I'm gonna use the first one, it's gonna work the first or second time I do it. Uh, I try to do it a third time, and by that time they kind of figure out what I'm trying to do. So then we have to switch, right? And use all three kind of together. And so on this one, this is obviously, you know, the first one is if I step here and I can break the knee, I'd just do that, right? If I could step up and I could push his knee, right? Now I can use that as my pass for the first one. The second one, or the, I went to touch the knee, but he went shin to shin or I missed, right? So that's why I have to step back and now I've got to do my drag. Third is now as I step, he still gets the shin, but I feel like he's either hooking with this foot and, or I feel like maybe I can't stand up quite as easy, right? And so now I'm in this position. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do kind of almost like a long step, right? And I'm gonna push him and I'm gonna fall and roll to my back. I'm gonna go here and go here. Notice how I'm looking at Jake. Now I'm gonna shoot my hips up and come all the way across. And now I've made that nice pass. So, we're here to here, I go to step, he blocks. I feel like, man, I don't think I'm gonna be able to stand up or I'm worried about the pass. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back step this, right? And make that nice little roll backwards. So when we do this roll, think of it like this. I'm gonna bring my knees to my chest and I shoot them up, right? Don't just roll as I roll backwards. See how I'm pushing my hips off the mat? Also, don't look straight ahead, look over your shoulder. All right, that way you're not rolling over your neck. So you're gonna roll over the shoulder. And that's how I'm gonna complete it. So, obviously we could do this first, right? Or we could do one of the other ones first. It doesn't really matter, so it should order. Uh, this one's just, like I said, stepping your leg up is easy. Right, if I can come here and I can do that and pass. Ah, Jake got this in. Good, he's kind of hooking here. 
All right, so now what I'm gonna do is just basically back step and roll right back over the top. All right, questions on that one? Good. Yes? I couldn't quite see on either, but when you were said you were looking over your shoulder, were you looking over the shoulder that was on his like head side or his yes. right side? So when I am here, right, I'm in this position, I'm still doing like a drag, right? I'm still pushing him and dragging him. So I'm just going here, here, see how I'm keeping him straight. And what I like to do is aim more higher on Jake than lower on Jake. Anyone know why? That's the way. Yeah, this leg, right? If I go this way, I'm going into his guard. Right, if I'm going, looking over this shoulder, I'm rolling more over his head and shoulder this way. So it's less likely that this leg is gonna get in the way. Right, but I, and I too, I don't wanna hang out all day when I do this. Like I don't wanna go to my back and look at Jake and be like, oh, I'm gonna roll now, right? Um, as soon as I roll, I'm trying to kick up over the top. Cause I still have to beat that leg. But if I go closer to his head, I have a better opportunity of going over the top because that leg's not in my way, right? So, you know, there again, I don't even have to stand up. I could do it from right here, right? Same idea, I fall to the side, move, and make that pass, all right? So we're here, I go to step, shin to shin. This is blocking, so now, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll right over the shoulder. Still pushing Jake back a little bit, because remember, I need to get him kind of flat, right? So as I push, I'm going this way. Now, you heavy guys who don't have the core strength to throw your legs up, go as far as you can and reach all the way across the body, right? You can almost run away from his guard if you don't have quite the core strength to throw yourselves up. All right, so when I go here, all right, that's, that's the big boy move, all right. We all wanna do the pretty move, all right. So we step, he shin to shin, here looking at Jake, throwing myself over and ended up on an ice guard pass, all right. So you, in your past career, before you were a gym owner, you were in uh, security work. How has security work influenced your jiu-jitsu, if any, and how has jiu-jitsu influenced your security work? Um, I, I would almost say that my jiu-jitsu more influenced my security. Um, just being calm, uh, you know, I, I did some pretty high level security stuff, traveled all over the world, um, you know, and you know, had a few crazy situations. Um, and, you know, I think the ability to always remain calm, um, staying under control, breathing, um, doing all these things, uh, you know, when situations get uh, amped up, uh, you know, finding your center, coming back to it, and really focusing on the task at hand versus trying, you know, getting caught up in all the panic. Um, you know, I, and I do that with, I think jujitsu is just such a part of me and in and, and general, I do that, you know, whether it's a bill that got, needs to be paid or, you know, uh, something's going on and there's, you know, I'm upset at something. I, you know, I try to always go back to that, that idea, that principle of like, you know, all right, breathe, assess, now react, you know? And so in, with, with the security stuff, you know, it was really important and also, um, the confidence that, that jujitsu gave me, you know, um, the peace of mind that I could handle a situation if it did arise, you know, and I, you can't go into too much detail, but there, there was a situation where, um, a couple guys had broken into a, a, a house and I happened to be there. Um, and, uh, they killed a dog, they did some different things. They were not good people. Um, and uh, I had to approach, I you know, came face to face with one of them. Um, had a, you know, of course I was armed and all that stuff, but I had the confidence 
to handle the situation without pulling my, my firearm. Um, and, you know, I was glad that it was me that day and not someone else because in, under that situation, that person could have, it could have got ugly. And because I had the confidence in my skills and knew how to handle it, um, I was able to kind of take the guy down and, and, and detain him and wait for the police and whole other, I mean, that's, it's a long story, but, uh, um, and I can't get into too much of it, but, uh, you know, it, it's, jujitsu gives the confidence. And you see this in law enforcement right now is you have a lot of people who don't have the training and something happens and the first thing they're gonna resort to is a weapon. Um, and, you know, it, having that another skill to be able to handle it without that, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, it's something that I, I hope every law enforcement agency out there, you know, really gets on board and, and, and does some, some martial arts training. You know, jujitsu probably is the best for that, but uh, it's, it definitely needs to be implemented. I'm trying to get into my game plan for what I'm trying to do. I'm not just simply going out there looking at Jake, you know, right? I'm here with Jake. We're in here and we're playing, you know, guard or whatever. I'm trying to pass the scar. And I'm not just randomly pushing the legs off and doing things. I'm going to fight for a position. Right? So if I was here and I was with Jake and I'm in here, I'm trying to pass this guard, I might stuff the knee and sit down. And we got all those techniques that we did the other day, right? So I was here, boom, I go here and I sit. Maybe I don't like this position on Jake. Right? Maybe I feel like, man, I'm gonna come back. And now I'm gonna be in this position. Right? Now I can push and go. Maybe we come back. Right? I'm here. I sit back. Boom, I come back to this. Right? So from here, if we're in here, I don't quite get where I want. I can always come back to this position. Right? Maybe I feel like I'm here. Maybe I feel better fighting it down on my knees. All right, maybe now I'm like, oh, I do that. Oh, he does that. Oh, we're here. Oh, don't feel like I have it. And now I make that pass. So all of those, they all go together, right? It's just, it's a grip, right? So we're just changing the position a little bit. I didn't change the grips in any of those, but they were all different passes. And that's the idea is that we're building a series. I know that if I have Jake in this position, I have those three passes we did today. Then we have stuffing the leg in, right? Just by me getting these grips, I have five, six, seven passes right off the bat that we've just worked in the last two weeks, right? So just by me doing this, we've set ourselves up for all kinds of options, right? If I'm in here and then I try to grab it or I'm doing something else, you know, I'm just fighting, grabbing the knees, right? Maybe I have a couple passes from here, you know? But if I go this, I have a game plan. This is a pass. This is reaction. I'm trying to pass. This is a game plan. Completely different. This is where we want to be, right? And that might not be this grips. It might be another series of grips, right? But whatever that is that you use to pass and you do it uh, you know, quite often or it's your best pass, that's what I wanna do. I'm not fighting Jake to pass this guard, I'm fighting Jake to get grips to my position. Because I know once I get to my position, this is where I, I'm gonna have the most success in trying to pass this guard. Make sense? Here, if I'm just like, right now I'm gonna, I'm, I'm reacting to his grips. Right, if I let Jake grab me in his grips, now I've got to figure out how do I pass this, right? But if I go to Jake instead of just walking in, I get my grips. Now I control, all right? So in that situation, generally, if Jake gets his grips on me, I want to break his grips, right? I'll break his grips to get my grips because I want to be comfortable. I want to be in charge, 
All right, that makes sense? Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's do that. Those three, actually, uh, just hit them like at least once or twice, and then we'll get to some sparring. So each partner does it a couple of times, but I want you to do all three of those. So Brent, there are a lot of mantras in jiu-jitsu, phrases that instructors repeat over and over again. And some of them I sit back and wonder, is that really true or not? I'm sure you have the same experience. Yeah. What do you think is the biggest lie in jiu-jitsu and the biggest truth in jiu-jitsu? Uh, let's start with the biggest truth. Uh, biggest truth, I would say probably the mats don't lie. Um, you know, you, you have to show up every day or as often as you can and, and train. And if you don't do that or you don't pick the, the tough training partners or you, you know, you stop training when you're, when you're, uh, when you're tired and, and all these things, uh, you know, it's, it's only going to affect how, how well you do a jujitsu and, and, and your skill level. Um, you know, and no matter what, you, you're the one that has to defend that belt that you have on. And I, I, I can remember, you know, when I got my black belt from Jean Jacques and I remember I was like super excited and happy and, you know, all those things. And I remember just looking at Jean Jacques and saying, you know, like, thank you, thank you for, for this. And, you know, it had been such a long goal. And he just looks at me and he says, he goes, look, I, did, I didn't do you any favors, you know? And, you know, he said, everyone now is going to come after you, you know? And it's true, you know? And, and if I hadn't put in the work and I hadn't, you know, been ready for that, that moment, um, every gym that I, that I went to from that day forward or people I trained with is like, oh, that's a Jean-Jacques Black Belt. And so everyone's coming for you, you know? And had I not really put in the work, one, I probably wouldn't have got it from Jean-Jacques, but uh, two, I wouldn't be able to back that up. And, you know, and I think that's important. I think that's something that I tell my students is that, you know, when I give you a belt, I want you to be, you know, you're going to be able to take that belt to any academy, you know, and I think that's important. You know, I think that, you know, we all have our own skill level and we all have our own thing, but you have to put the, the hours on the map. And uh, so, yeah, I would say that would be the, the truth, the lie, right? Is that what we're doing? Uh, that it gets easier, <laughs> right? Um, you know, you think you're, after all, putting all that time on the mat that everything would just be easy. And that, you know, if you're a black belt, you would just tap everyone easily and, you know, and you would have no problem with it or whatever. Um, and that couldn't be the farthest from the truth, uh, especially in today. Uh, you know, when I was coming up, there, you know, we, we live in a time now where everyone has watched the UFC. Right, everyone knows what a guard is. Everyone knows what an armbar is. Everyone, you know, they, everyone that's out there now who walks through those doors at some point has seen some type of jujitsu, you know, um, and so I think the people coming in, you know, have a better understanding. So uh, the superpower of it has gone away a little bit, but um, you know, and also getting older and all those things, uh, all you know, the battles, the battles and through. injuries, the knees, the elbows, the backs. Yeah. So, you know, it doesn't get easier. Uh, I think we get a little smarter. Um, maybe our defense gets a little better, um, but certainly it doesn't get easier. It never fails to surprise me that every gym is different. The culture flows from the top down. Brent is a man who has put in the work, training, competing, and traveling the world to teach. He's accomplished a lot in his years, and now he passes on the art that has done so much for him. Brent cares about his students like family, and it really shows. There's a lot we can all learn from not only his techniques, but the way he teaches, and the way he builds a fun, supportive environment, all within the competitiveness that underlies Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Thanks for watching another episode of Rolled Up. If you enjoyed the show, I'd like to ask you to take a moment to visit budovideos.com or nogi.com and see if there's anything that you need. At Budo Videos, you'll find a huge selection of martial arts videos, books, and training gear. Nogi.com is where you'll find the world's best fight shorts and rash guards. Use code ROLLEDUP, all one word, for a discount on your order. Keep on rolling.